So in this episode of the Leadersmith Podcast, we're going to go into the management and leadership ability of Yertle the Turtle, a character from Dr. Seuss. Stay with us. In a world of incompetent bosses, micromanagers, and petty tyrants, you are listening to The Leadersmith. Now, here is your host, Darren Gertis. Okay, so I read voraciously, and uh, I'm always looking for a new leadership and management ideas from whatever books I can find it. Um, this was a little bit off the beaten trail. I uh, picked up a Dr. Seuss book, Yertle the Turtle, and I didn't realize the profound leadership lessons that are here. So I'm going to read Yertle the Turtle in its entirety, and I'm going to give you some commentary along the way. Okay, so here we are on the faraway island of Salamasand. Yertle, the turtle, was king of the pond. A nice little pond. It was clean. It was neat. The water was warm. There was plenty to eat. The turtle sat everything turtles might need. And they were all happy. Quite happy indeed. Okay, let's stop there. So, everything's going fine. Uh, they have what they need. Everything's okay. Until. They were until Yertle, the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. Stop. Uh oh, bad things are brewing. You know, you've seen a manager that has come in and done this kind of thing. Uh, he's decided it's, too, it's time to kingdom build, and here he goes. I'm a ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see, but I don't see enough. That's the trouble with me. With a stone for a throne, I look down on my pond, but I cannot look down on the places beyond. This throne that I sit on is too, too low down. It ought to be higher, he said with a frown. Uh-oh, what's going to happen? Now, if you're thinking about what is possible to happen, he's going to then extract more and more out of his employees in order to get there. If I could sit high, how much greater I'd be. What a king. I'd be ruler of all that I see. So Yertle the turtle lifted his hand, and Yertle the turtle gave a command. He ordered nine turtles to swim to his stone, and using these turtles, he built a new throne. So, what just happened? So the boss wants to be, you know, more recognized or, or more prominent or make his mark. And so what's he doing? He's asking his employees to do more on his behalf, not for the organization, not to make the pond a better place, but to make him look better. He made each turtle stand on another one's back and he piled them all up in a nine turtle stack. And then Yertle climbed up. He sat down in the pile. What a wonderful view. He could see most a mile. Uh oh, okay, so the boss just got these perks, and he's going to get acclimated to these perks, and he's going to like the perks, and he's going to like being recognized. It's not going to go well for the rest of the turtles. All mine, Yertle cried. Oh, the things I now rule. I am king of a cow. I'm the king of a mule. I'm the king of a house. And what's more beyond that, I'm the king of a blueberry bush and a cat. I'm Yertle the turtle. Oh, marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. So, what just happened? Now that the manager is in charge, he's caused them to do work on his behalf, not for the organization, not for the pond. He is having them do that for him. He's starting to get a little arrogant. He's starting to get inflated, think that this is, you know, this is good. We should do more of that. And all through the morning, he sat up there high, saying over and over, a great king am I. Until long about noon, then he heard a faint sigh. What's that, snapped the king, and he looked down the stack, and he saw at the bottom a turtle named Mac, just a part of his throne, and a plain little turtle looked up, and he said, Beg your pardon, King Yertle. I have pains in my back and my shoulders and knees. How long must we stand here, your majesty, please? Silence, the king of the turtles barked back. I am king, and you're only a turtle named Mac. Okay, so you're seeing where this is going, right? Even though he is working these guys over and they're groaning under the pressure, he's not wanting to listen to it because it's building his kingdom. It's making him look good. So, so what, Mac? It, it's hard for you? Tough. I'm enjoying the perks and the privileges. It's a bad sign when you don't listen to your employees, the ones that are groaning, trying to make it work. You stay in your place while I sit here and rule. I'm the king of a cow, and I'm the king of a mule. I'm the king of a house, and a bush, and a cat. But that isn't all. I'll do better than that. Uh-oh, something's brewing. He's going to want more. 
because he's already gotten this perk and this perk and he's he's gotten up higher and he's now enjoying the perks of being in office and the, the benefits of being in charge. He wants more and it's going to become an insatiable appetite that will ruin him. My throne shall be higher, his royal voice thundered, so pile up more turtles. I want about two hundred. Turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and brayed, and the turtles way down in the pond were afraid. They trembled, they shook, but they came, they obeyed. Okay, that's what's going on. We know the boss is nuts, and we're going to have to do this extra work that's not going to make any sense, but we're going to go do it. But when you're in charge and you cut the paychecks, you can demand irrational things. From all over the pond they came swimming by dozens, whole families of turtles with uncles and cousins, and all of them stepped on the head of poor Mac. One after another they climbed up the stack. Then Yertle the turtle was perched up so high he could see forty miles from his throne in the sky. Hooray! shouted Yertle. I'm the king of the trees. I'm the king of the birds. I'm the king of the bees. I'm the king of the butterflies. King of the air. Ah me, what a throne. What a wonderful chair. Okay. The sign of a bad leader is that he's all into himself and that he doesn't care about the impact of his uh, on his followers, that he doesn't allow them to influence him. Mac is down there groaning and he's asking, let's pile on more. No, you, you know, Covey talked about how, um, you know, you can't influence me unless I can influence you. And Yertle a turtle will not be influenced by anyone that's getting in the way of what he wants, which is to be glorified. And when you want to be glorified, you'll use other people or turtles in this instance in order to get what you want. OK, back to our story. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am ruler of all that I see. Then again from below in the great heavy stack came a groan from that plain little turtle named Mac. Your majesty, please, I don't like to complain, but down here below we are feeling great pain. I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down here at the bottom we too should have rights. We turtles can't stand it, our shells will all crack. Besides, we need food, we are starving, groaned Mac. Well, okay, so how do you think Yertle's going to answer him? Oh, you know, you're hungry. My job as a leader is to take care of your needs. I'll get off this stack and make sure that you have all the provisions that you need. Nope, that's not what he's going to say. You hush up your mouth, howled the mighty King Yertle. You have no right to talk to the world's highest turtle. Stop. Okay, at this point, he's now the world's highest turtle, where before he was just, you know, king of the turtle sitting on a stump. But now he's even more arrogant. And this is the way it works. The, the more that he becomes successful on the backs of these people, the more he's going to drive them, the more he's going to be higher and well seen, and he's going to drive them more and more and more. The arrogance be creates a cycle. I rule from the clouds, over land, over sea. There's nothing, no nothing that's higher than me. But while he was shouting, he saw with surprise that the moon of the evening was starting to rise, up over his head in that darkening skies. What's that, snorted Yertle? Say, what is that thing that dares to be higher than Yertle the king? I shall not allow it. I shall go higher still. I'll build my throne higher. I can and I will. Again, the arrogance perpetuates a self-perpetuating cycle that is going to cause him to even extract more and more and more and more. It's insatiable. I'll call some more turtles. I'll stack them to heaven. I need about 5,607. But as Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand and started the order to give the command, that plain little turtle below in the stack, that plain little turtle whose name was just Mac, decided he'd taken enough and he had. And that plain little turtle got a little bit mad. Okay, this is what happens. You can only abuse people but so long before bad things happen. And Yertle the Turtle didn't realize that abusing Mac and all the other turtles that have not been named is a bad plan. And it's going to be his undoing. And that plain little Mac did a plain little thing. He burped. And his burp shook the whole throne of the king. And Yertle the turtle, the king of the trees, the king of the air, and the birds and the bees, the king of the house and the cow and the mule. Well, that was the end of the turtle king's rule. For Yertle, the king of all Salamasand, fell off his high throne and fell plunk in the pond. And today the great Yertle, that marvelous he, is king of the mud. That is all he can see. And the turtles, of course, and the turtles are free as turtles and maybe all creatures should be. So Mac, 
by one little act of disobedience, overthrew the king by uh, the you know the turtles st the stack of turtles that were his throne fell to the ground just from a simple burp. Now it's not always a simple burp. Very often it becomes uh, workplace deviance or something that is fairly significant or just slowing down sabotage you know what the word sabotage means it was from sabots that those were shoes that were put in the factory machines to slow things down that's that's where the root of the word sabotage is and it doesn't have to be anything active it can be passive it can be when the when the police department is not supported by the mayor and then they get blue flu and don't show up for work because you can't treat people like they're slaves and expect them to do well it's that's not it and you can't think you can't you can't let yourself get into a cycle where you start thinking more and more and more of yourself what you want to do is you want to focus more and more and more on your people and they will naturally raise you up this is the lesson of yurtle the turtle i hope you don't become like yurtle the turtle this brings us to our quotation for contemplation for today. It comes from somebody who knew something about leadership. His name was Jocko Wilnick. He was a Navy SEAL, and he learned leadership the hard way. In Leadership Strategy and Tactics, he wrote this. If you want to have influence over others, you need to allow them to have influence over you. Don't be yurtle the turtle. Be more like Jocko Wilnick. Learn the lesson of leadership from somebody who's experienced it the hard way. Hey, thanks for your time. And if you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing, subscribing, uh, tell your friends about it. I want you and anybody who wants to be a better leader to become the kind of leader that they would want to follow.